Yes, is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, on the Rockstar Radio Network. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, this past week was always an interesting week for me because it's the annual birthday week. And I was reminded of a couple of things. One was um, that it's lovely to have so many friends globally with all these uh, uh, emails and messages and phone calls, people singing happy birthday. But one of the things that my husband says, so what would you like to do? And there was a movie I wanted to see at the end of the day. And it was called uh, Monuments Men. And so we planned on working up into the last minute, which is what my MO is. And we planned on going to see that and then having just a quiet light supper afterwards. And number one, I'm very glad I did see it because I loved it. Uh, But it also brought me back to a birthday a while ago as well because the gift I got for that birthday was a painting and I mentioned it last week that we were playing around with going to see that because we did the show on my birthday and so we went to see it and I got a painting which was from the Monuments Men and it was saved so we went to see it and um, it triggered uh, a blog that I released this morning um, and that it literally starts off with. <clears throat> and it's called Creating the Monument Author Platform. So this is why this was so instrumental. And this is what the show is going to be about today. And I'm just going to be, I will be the solo person. And we will be talking about creating your book, your author platform, because it's so elementary to whether or not you're going to make it or not. And when you look at the data of the average self-published, independent published person, when they only sell a meager 100 copies, it hurts it hurts me when i hear those numbers and yet at the same time an email i got this morning from my uh, book shepherding client lynn farrell who is the author of a book called the iodine crisis and that book was available in print in april of 213 she has now encountered her fourth printing this last printing she's gone back for 7,000 copies the one before was 5,000 the one before was 4,000 the first one was 3,000 she has done it through her own marketing primarily through the internet with a key listing on Amazon yeah a few bookstores have have it but it's really been reaching out in her networks and her platform because she was very clear on what her vision was. She was loaded with the passion behind it, and she was extraordinarily committed. And Lynn's had some up and downs uh, during this past year where her husband was critically ill. She recently lost him, and yet she still was there to support her book as well as her family during this crisis because she had set up so much ahead of time that when she needed to breathe and take a time out... The machine still moved forward. So let's come back with what the platform is. With the beginning of that Oscar-nominated film, The Monument Men, that we have George Clooney and Matt Damon and Bill Murray and Kate Blanchett and God and John Goodman and a few others all involved in it, you have the opening scene. And Frank Stokes, who is Clooney's character, is making a pitch. And who's he pitching? Why, the President of the United States. And that is Roosevelt. Although you never see Roosevelt, you just have a little profile. And what he wants and what he is coming from, from his heart, is the creation of what becomes known as the Monuments, Fine Arts, and Archives Program. 
And the goal basically was to save the pieces of culturally important items and arts from the destruction of the Nazis. Now, what I learned from the film, which I did not know, is that Hitler was a failed art student and that he had planned on having creating what was known as the Fuhrer uh, Museum of Art. And, of course, where was all the art going to come from? From everything he stole and confiscated throughout the war. So as Stokes, a la Clooney, is pitching to the president uh, that, that it was what we call a vision, and that is the first key component of your platform. As an author, what is your personal vision? Really, what, what's driving you? How big do you see this thing going? Where is it going to expand to? What, what's all the audiences reach for? What's the impact and the effectiveness of it? What's your vision? Did over your book. Where is that going to come from? What's the vision for your book? Who's it for? What's the benefit? What's the value? All those elements are absolutely critical to understand from the very get-go. And if you don't, you start to set yourself up. So with that said, the vision that Stokes had then reaches out to a very mixed, oddball group. And of course, the actors who are here are in the all sizes and all shapes side of it. So they have that going on. And with that, that passion is ignited. So you have museum directors, you have historians, you've got curators, you've got believers that brought deep passion to the project. Now together, collectively, they bring up what is now known as commitment. And they, each of them were committed to the success of finding the art and the artifacts of saving it and putting it aside so that people like you and me would be able to discover it and find it. So with that said, no platform, your platform, your book platform, your author platform cannot get off the ground. If you don't have those three critical things, your vision, your passion, and your commitment. And you need to remember this about commitment. I remember my Ken Blanchard, who is an old friend um, and someone I've spoken with many times and certainly as a creator and an author of a gazillion books, but came to fame really with the One Minute Manager series. And what Ken said and says is there is a very, very distinct line between interest and commitment. So my question for each of you is, are you just interested in writing a book and creating a book and maybe printing a book or e-booking a book or publishing a book, or are you really committed to it? So when these three are in play, your book has absolutely the very best, best chance of breaking out and really succeeding. So we're going to go through all these areas of what you have in that your timing of what you need as we look at creating your platform. What are the components and how you can go about doing that? First of all, You start up knowing what your message is. Now, that kind of seems as common sense as breathing, but do you know how many authors are really clueless to what their message is? Do you know how many authors are clueless to who we really, who they are writing for? So this seems logical and it seems very simple, yet too many fumble and they stumble here. So for you, it's imperative to be able to say very clearly and very directly what your message is. Now, only your vision is going to be able to fuel that. Only your vision. Next up is you've got to create value, really value to that message. 
So this is where that passion factor comes into play. What, what, what's driving you to the point that you actually are ready to go from noodling, go from tweaking, go from maybe writing down some random ideas or storylines or concepts or how to's or solutions or answers or activities or exercises that you might do in display to actually getting them down, kind of putting them together. Because you know what we're talking about here is the puzzle. We're talking about a puzzle piece. And I've always told authors, when you think about writing a book, think of it as a giant jigsaw puzzle. So when you get that, when, when you open up your, your box of puzzle pieces, and this is something that my family always, we have a family puzzle a rama during the Thanksgiving holiday. And we all work on it throughout the day together until voila, the end of the day, into the night, it's done. And what's the first thing you do when you dump all those pieces out? Don't you kind of start looking for the straight lines? Don't you look for the edges? Aren't you looking for the frame? And ah, the coveted corner? Well, books are the same way. They have those outlines, they have the straight lines, they have the frame. You've got to have that kind of together so that vision becomes the frame of where you're going, of that driving, if you have it together. And then isn't it also normal in the puzzle piece that you start taking those little components and you start, ah, this this is this color of blue, this is where the sky is gonna go. Oh, this look at all these shades of green. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is this this earth format or this brown color or, 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 or maybe it's the village you start segmenting and put them into sections well those are sections they may even be your chapters and a lot of times you know they don't fully come together they don't they're not fully in play until you really see that that starts the pieces fitting together so I've always said you know you don't have to write chapter by chapter just get them into components if you have all your like the like pieces. All right, so with that said, we're going to start moving into other areas that make this happen when we come back about adding that value to the message. This is Judith Bryles. You're listening to your guide. is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the rockstar radio network is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create develop and publish your book without being good if you already have a book out You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at author follow author you on twitter at author you and on facebook at author you where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily author you where the author goes to become seriously successful books? Lots of them? If yes, you must take credit cards, the most widely used form of payment today. The Free Terminal has created a special program for your guide to book publishing listeners. No contract, all equipment is free, extremely low rates, and no termination fees ever. Contact Alan Dean at Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call him at 303-668-6828. The Free Terminal has handled all 
credit card transactions for both Author U and Judith for over a year. Don't wait another day. Contact Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call 303-668-6828 and tell him you want the no contract Author U deal. Every picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival, Award and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Guide to Book Publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. When it comes to creating your book and author platform, you need to keep this in mind. There is nothing accidental about creating it. All successful businesses have a platform. All successful authors that I know of have one. And their their and yours survival is going to depend on it. So I, I want you before, since I was talking about knowing what your message is and, and then tying in with creating the value in the message, that... When I wrote Author You, Creating and Building Your Author and Book Platforms, I tell a story. And it starts off something like this. Picture this. You have an idea, an idea for a book that is rejected by every major publisher, a book that contains extensive research, lots of interviews, and you can feel it in your every bone, your every core, that it shouts out that it could be one of your breakout books. In fact, if you had the support and the powerhouse, of your publisher, a publisher behind you, that it could be a bestseller. But it's rejection, rejection, rejection. So what do you do? Do you say, screw it, it's not going to work? Or do you keep pushing it because in your heart of hearts, you know it's big? Well, that was me. That was back in 1986. Um, and I had just finished my dissertation. I knew that the topic was hot. It was on ethics. It was on women and sabotage and do and how, if they do, uh, more than men, sabotage, betray, undermine each other. So I wrote it up. And I have to tell you, my initial, <laughs> my initial title was WSW. It stood for Women Screwing Women or Women Supporting Women. But it was always known as WSW in my in my offices and my agent liked it i was with the william morris agency at the time and that i was only published by new york i mean you know who who would obviously publish it yourself only the people who are rejects right and i set it out rejection 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 28 of those lovely little letters came in and we finally went with a very we got a little teeny i'm talking about minuscule offer from a very small press and I decided to take it now if I knew what I knew now there was no way I would take a little teeny offer but there's no way I would probably even go down the New York route 
because I know how to distribute. I know how to market. I know how to print a quality book. I got the team all in play. I can do that. But I didn't know that then. And I didn't have the tools that I have now, you know, 20, 30 years, not quite 30 years later. So we went ahead with it. And it all came from an embezzlement that I had gone through where a partner, a good friend of mine, basically had swiped a million dollars and I was held responsible for it and had to pay back every penny because she stole it from a loan that I had personally guaranteed. I then started interviewing a lot of other women who had gone through similar betrayals, sabotage, horrible business experiences, and we had a lot in common. And it was this deep sense of how we had been personally violated because it was a friend. I mean, it was a woman. How could she do it? We expected something from men, but from a woman. So I took that as my plan going on. And I remember sitting and speaking at a conference in Milwaukee, and Gloria Steinem was the other keynote. And we were having dinner that night, and, and she said, you can't do this. You, you, just, you cannot publish this book. You, you cannot give them more ammunition to use against us. And I remember saying to Gloria, but Gloria, this is why Ms. Magazine is failing. Of all the backstabbing and undermining and betrayal that's going on. And she says, we cannot talk about it. Well, my attitude is you can't fix stuff unless you acknowledge it, one, and talk about it, two, and come up with remedies. So I published. Well, Woman to Woman which became what the title of the book, From Sabotage Support, did quite well. It became the pioneering book in the topic. It took me from everywhere, from Oprah the Time to Star Magazine, National Enquirer, Wall Street Journal, and every, I was all over the Timbuktu, including Four Pages and People Magazine. So, see, in my vision, I saw that. I saw that happening. I knew it was a breakout book. My passion for it that we've got to stop doing it. We've got to drive it. We've got to talk about it. We've got to bring awareness. I'm going to give you some remedies for it. Became the driving factor. And I was totally committed. Now, you see, what I didn't realize what I was doing back in 1987 when it was originally published, what I didn't realize I was doing that I was having to learn PR. I was having to learn publicity because I became the motivating the, the instrument, the tool behind the movement and reaching out to the media. And by, back then we faxed, we faxed everything. But that's what we did to connect it, to get on, find the producers, and create the publicity to drive the book and the buyers to the bookstores. And of course, that's before we had this lovely little thing called Amazon and online shopping to help us out there. So the vision, the passion, the commitment made it successful. So you've got to think about that. You know, what are you going to bring to it? So finding the thing that you have to do is really understand what your intentionality is on that. So and and why are you the person to bring this to the party and bring it to the game and then make that happen? Now, the next component of that is you really have to look at what that do you bring to the party? What value, distinct value, what's the benefit do you bring to that reader? And right now, and those of you who've been listening to Author You, you Guide to Book Publishing, know that I have used this example many, many times and told you to do this. Whatever you're doing right now, where you're, you're sitting at your computer, stop. Look up across the, the lid of it. Who's there? Who is that perfect buyer? What does he or she look like? What do they do? How many kids do they have, if any? What do they love to eat? What do they love to play? Where do they hurt? What do they like to do for fun? What do they like to shy away from? What are they fearful of? What are their concerns? You start literally putting together so that every time you sit down and you're working on your book, you can distinctly see every time you look up, oh, there's Brendan. There's Susan, there's Martha, there's Samantha, there's Madison, there, 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 there's my buyer. And when you have that, you know what value you bring to them. And it could be 
tears of laughter because you're a humorist and you just write really fun stuff. It could be fantasy that you're going to take me on escaping. It could be a really ride with a thriller of a, of a read. It could be you're going to ease my pain and solve my problems because I've got some health issues. It could be that you've got some solutions to some, a really touchy management situation that I've got going on. It could be there's some nutritional advice that's coming into play. It could be, oh my gosh, you've got the neatest advice on how to do a makeover of my entire house for less than $100. So what benefit and value does your passion have as you drive your message forward? Now, the next step is to really understand before we go to our next break is who, who is this person? You've described them. All right, so where do they hang out? One of the things that new authors and old authors consistent to make when I ask, who's your book for? Oh, everybody. It's for everybody. Not. The more you niche yourself, the bigger your market comes. You don't want to be a sardine in the sea. You want to be the whale in the pond. You want to be the person who gets noticed, the, per the go-to person, whether it's for entertainment and a great read and a ride that you fiction authors have the gift to do, or you're going to solve my problems, ease my pain, take me to another level, move my company forward, fill it in the blank, that the nonfiction people so elegantly can do with their stories and examples. So interesting. It's not for everybody. It's not for everyone. But it is for people who literally narrow themselves down. So if people all say, you know, when they have some of these oddball topics, maybe niche, maybe they couldn't get a pharmacy company to find the drug for the antidote. But the reality is, you know, several thousand, 100,000 readers, oh, bestseller, bestseller, bestseller. Remember the average book, New York, Midwest, does not sell more than 5,000 copies. Chew on that. We'll be right back. I'm Judith Browse, and it's Author You, your guide to book publishing. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your time 
title, Enhancing the Promotion of Your Book During Infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so I left you chewing on really how few books New York sells. And when you think of yourself as an author and knowing that less than 5,000 copies of the life of a book is going to be sold via New York, that's not very much money. If you're talking about a $20 book and they usually pay royalties on net, that would be roughly a 55% discount or $9 um, and 10% of $9 is 90 cents and you're only selling 5,000 books total, 90 cents times 5,000 is not a lot of money for all the work and all the waiting you put in. So one of the things that I'm gonna recommend to all of you who are listening right now is that whatever you're doing, clear your calendars because May 1 to 3 in Denver, Colorado, Author U, which is one of our sponsors and is a group that's a nonprofit group, um, a, a membership group for authors who really want to be seriously successful that it has its annual Author You Extravaganza. This is the fifth year. Over 35 national exhibitors are coming, the major printers, book designers, cover designers. Uh, Ingram will be here. You've got Mark Coker, who's doing the keynote on Friday morning, who is the CEO of Smashwords. You've got Penny Sansevieri, who is doing the Thursday night deep dive dinner workshop on marketing and working with Amazon. You have got Susan Gilbert, who is brilliant on social media and will be doing a very special session on how to rock and roll with YouTube. Um, and so many more. If you go to authoru.org and look at the website um, and just click on the events tab and then the extravaganza, you will find the total details for the entire uh, weekend. And it's Author U is an environment that not only do we that your your brain gets fed, but so is your belly, you get all your meals included. But it's an amazing, amazing event. It's not a pitch fest. There's nothing quite like it. It's high content, high community, high creativity. What more could an author want to be successful? So go to it right now, get registered, sign up. It will be the one of the best investments that will nurture your vision, support your passion, and it will enforce, reinforce your commitment side. So let's come back to that. So uh, it, as we talk about the platform and creating the author and book platform. So when you're going about it and you're, you're moving forward in that, can you really ask yourself, and this really ties into part of the passion factor, and, and, and I like to ask this question in your heart of hearts. Why are you important to the book? And in your heart of hearts, why is this topic important? I had a discussion with someone who called me, who I had met many years ago. She actually was part of a PR team for one of my books um, when I was published 
publishing exclusively through New York. And she had a book idea and I listened to her and I said, well, I think there's a market for that. But, it, and she said, but New York's rejecting it. I'm, and I said, so you're going the traditional route. And she said, well, that's what I know. And I said, well, why? I think there's a lot of interest in that. And the topic involved actually psychics. And, and I said, I think there's a lot of interest in that. I mean, one of the top rated shows is The Mentalist. And that involves uh, certainly a high level of intuitiveness, a high level of observation. And people say that's a lot involved in the psychic realm, that those are critical factors in there. So I said, I think that maybe you're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe you should be looking at other options out here. Now, what are some of the things that can get in your way from building your platform? Well, it's a, it's a wonderful word called perfection. And one of the, the, the so, to me, sometimes it's almost a tragedy of, of authors who keep doing it, keep revisiting it over and over and over and over again. It's kind of like one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, three to get ready, three to get ready, three to get ready, and they never can go. And uh, another author talking with, and I, and I just said for Anne, when are you going to get this book done? It's really you're showcasing your expertise. Well, I learned some more. And I said, why don't you make a couple of mini books? Why don't you bring in a couple of 120 pagers in that arena? And then you can piece them together in a master mothership book. But why did you get something out so you have something out? Because all of you who are listening in, isn't it true, especially in the nonfiction arena, that something comes along that, uh oh, I need to add in more information. And you have to ask yourself, is it groundbreaking? Or is it just kind of, hmm, nice to know. Could I do a blog on it? Could I enhance it? Could I carry it that way? For fiction authors, is there some new gadget or some really quirky new phrase that you thought of, oh, I could take me to another realm and I could add on a new gizmo or gadget, put my character, my protagonist in another challenge? Well, maybe. Does it move the story forward? You always have to ask that question. So perfection could be one of the worst enemies for an author to have. Because what it does and what perfection is, is you do need to understand, is a form of blatant procrastination. It's a stall. It's a putting off. And so you have to really ask yourself, okay, so where am I going to go with that as I go along in putting it together? Now, I'm going to suggest to you as you put together your platform that you do it visually. You use some kind of, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, mind mapping or any of those things that bring it into play, but uh, I think about a collage, and I know that when I do my um, annual event in late summer called Judith Browse Unplugged, that everyone gets the book and author game plan, and it's literally, oh, it's, it's, three, by, it's three by four in size and that they are loaded up with post-it notes and it's divided up into 11 different sections and that they will work on it during the weekend and adding to it so they really get that clarity of what their vision is because isn't it true that sometimes you can see a movie or you're reading something else or you're having a discussion or you're taking a walk and something drops in a new idea drops in or an add-on to it that adds more clarity to a situation that you're writing about or working on or you've been noodling for a while and all of a sudden ah, the aha comes along. So what you want to do is, uh, what we do is we create, and I have it very visual, they roll them up and they take it home with them, but that it, it works on a flow chart and in the author you creating your author and uh, book game plans or, or platforms is that we go through and we lay out what that game plan looks like. So let me go through some of those components for you. And one of them is, and I've already mentioned a, a few of these, but one of them comes into play is exactly who are your people? Who are they? For the nonfiction group, you can narrow that down. 
because it's going to be people in your area of expertise. Um, it could be people who uh, maybe you're a consultant in a certain field or maybe you're an engineer of a specific topic. Okay, your people are people who are like people. So you identify your people. Then you have to really, and I've mentioned this, this last section of our show today, of what's the value that you bring to them? Um, when I wrote my book, Stabotage, How to Deal with Pit Bulls, Skunk Snakes, Scorpions, and Slugs in the Healthcare Workplace, I knew that my value was conflict resolution. I knew my value was dealing with the toxic people in the workplace. I knew that the value would be a more effective and better way to communicate. I knew my value was I was going to give you a new script instead of the tire old conflict four point conflict resolution deal. I knew that I was going to bring them problem solving skills and and, and I and I knew that I was going to base my initial at least the genesis of the book on another national survey I would do on the topic. And I also knew that I would have stories, real life stories that they could connect with so they could be reading and thinking, oh my God, there it goes but for the grace of God I or there goes I, or there goes, that's what my friend Susan is going through. So I knew that value, and I would also lace it, because I'm dealing with a dicey topic, I would have some fun, because I needed to give them some relief as I was deep diving into it. So what's your value that you bring to it? Those are, those are critical to understand. In your commitment, you've got to really get, uh, uh, really focus on how are you going to stay connected? Are you going to have a website? Hopefully. What's going to be the name of the website? Your name? Hopefully. I'm a big believer in branding the author. If your name is taken or you never thought about get, getting your own personalized URL, maybe just putting your name and author.com behind it and you build your brand on you. And, and uh, you may be thinking, oh, I only have one book. I only have one book. The reality is books breed books. And I will bet you'll have another book. So you want to brand yourself as the author. So how are you going to stay connected? Your website will be one. Definitely a blog will be another. Different platforms, whether it's Google+, Plus, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Tumblr, whether it's Instagram. How are you going to stay connected with people? You want to have that down. Are you going to have an easy? Are you going to have your YouTube channel? Recommended. Are you going to start a radio show? How are you going to stay connected? So all those things add in to your commitment portion on your uh, uh, on, on creating the platform, and that's what's going to bring it into play, and that's what's critical for you. We'll be right back, and I'm going to tie this all. Together. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Do you sell stuff? Do you want to sell books? Lots of them? If yes, you must take credit cards, the most widely used form of payment today. The Free Terminal has created a special program for your guide to book publishing listeners. No contract. All equipment is free. Extremely low rates and no termination fees ever. Contact Alan Dean at Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call him at 303-668-6828. The Free Terminal has handled all credit card transactions for both Author You and Judith for over a year. Don't wait another day. Contact Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call 303-668-6828 and tell him you want the no contract Author You deal. shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. 
publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303 885-2207. That's 303-885-2207. Or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. So in our final section, dealing with the author and book platforms, that keep this in mind. Your platform is the infrastructure of everything you're going to do. It, it starts with kind of a statement of fact. Why you wrote the book. Why you're the author for it. Why you're committed to it. The theme, the topic. It starts with knowing who your readers and your crowd are your fans, your community. And it's very clear on what value, what significance you'll bring to them as they read. All of this is going to be done with what I call the four C's, confidence, clarity, competence, and commitment. Now, you'll notice that I didn't start off with the platform as all the people you know. Because that's what most people think that it is. Oh, oh, platform, I know it is. That's social media. Oh, it's how many fans you have on Facebook, and it's how many peeps you have on Twitter, and how many connections you have on LinkedIn, and how many people have joined you on Google+. Plus. No, the platform is that infrastructure, and that means it starts internally with you. What's your vision? What's your passion? What's your commitment? When you bring all those together, the people find you. Because when you are committed, which is a critical component of this whole thing, and commitment comes from the time you're going to put into it, it comes from the energy that you have for it, and it certainly becomes from the financial side that you're going to invest in it. If you tell me, oh, you know, I have a couple hundred dollars I'm going to put toward marketing, I'm going to tell you good luck. Now, there's a lot of free stuff online that you can tap into and use and melt and integrate with. Oh, you can follow a gazillion blogs and you can make contacts and build relationships and you can actually develop a virtual blog tour for free. But the commitment factors of time and energy are humongous here and you've got to have them so if you're going to come in 
and you're budgeting on a shoestring and there are things that lots of things that you can do on a shoestring and I'm all for doing that that you've got to have an overabundance of time and energy to be able to implement them and use otherwise you're going to have to get some help now you can pay for services and you can do things domestically you can get some overseas services there's a variety of things you can do that can help you especially in the social media arena you're going to need some other resources whether there's you know create some tools some gadgets some online uh you want to bookmarks you certainly have to still have business cards please don't walk away from not having that you need to have something that people can take away after they inter with interact with you to remember you so commitment goes a long 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 way and is critical as you bring in the people for your message that that structure that infrastructure your platform has developed and is ready to receive to build on and as they build on themselves so books don't happen overnight and the writing of it doesn't happen overnight nor does the creation of the infrastructure happen overnight all of it takes some time as you're putting it together so the commitment factor is critical and you have to look at on you don't have to spend a fortune so please don't think that but i know that you're going to have to spend a little money and the less mistakes you can make because you learn what's out there what your options are the more whatever your money that you have will go and you need to keep this in mind i have to remind authors all the time this is not a sprint publishing and the success and the support of it is a marathon as we go forward so it's important for you to learn what you need and what you don't need very important it's important to avoid the growing number of publishing predators that are just um they're breeding almost on every corner every time i turn around i get uh, stories of the next rip off the next scam the next problem the next con it's important to use publishing pros that really know about the business of books this is what they do this is what their job is full time is creating and developing and putting this together and it's really critical for you really to understand a spending plan for your own book to understand where you are and what you're going to understand the dollars and cents and cents of of this book it's important for you to understand if you're going to do a print run how many books do you need to sell to break even to cover your cost from the get go wouldn't it be good to know that up up front wouldn't it be great to know that you know what if i sell 400 books i've covered every penny of my out of pocket cost in developing this book to bringing it forth and knowing that every book sold that board is all profit now one of the things that so many don't get in the development of this thing called the platform is that this is a business and that you as the author are the ceo of the business and as a ceo you have things that you will be doing yourself and a lot of times ceos often have a, a key responsibility especially in the entrepreneurial line the small company of being very very involved in the outreach and the marketing side of it and there are other things that you'll bring in other people that you will pay for their services and you're going to negotiate and find the best the best deal for the least amount of money that's part of being a ceo so you're putting together and what you need to understand that is once this book is written the author hat is shifted because the new hat that you now put on is the ceo and you've got a product you got a product to sell you got a product to move and that product is the book so when the platforms are in play that you developed from your vision when that platforms in play that you developed from the passion that's driving you and when that platforms in play because you are truly committed to it in your time and energy and the finances you have you're going to have a success on your hands so that's what's critical 
to understand. So I'm going to bring you back to the blog I wrote because I ended up sharing, and I've never really shared publicly, the picture that my friend Nicole gave me. And if you look at it, as I've mentioned before, and if you look really closely, you can see where the Nazis had blacked out, or it's not really black, it's a very dark, kind of a deep, dark forest, dark, dark, dark forest, green with some chocolatey colors in it, because they blended it in. They're very good at blending. But there is a strip about one inch by four. It goes across in the lower left corner and eliminates the name of whoever the artist was that put together my bouquet of flowers. And on the right side, lower right of the painting, there is another name. I don't know who that is either, but it was added after the other was eliminated. When you have a platform, it's very hard for someone to eradicate your name. It's very hard for someone to eradicate your vision. It's very hard for someone to eradicate that passion that brought you forth. And it's pretty impossible for someone to eliminate the commitment you have to bring it to success. A faux name added onto it never succeeds. Now, my friend who gave me the painting said, you know, you could lift that name. You could remove that stripped out and really find out who the artist is. And I know that. But the 1940s really weren't that long ago. And there's always going to be war themes and wars and stories about World War II and what happened in the Holocaust. And I'm not Jewish, but a lot of my dear friends are. And I think it's important for me to be visually reminded, just like the vision board, that game plan that I was describing earlier in the show where I put up, I use post-its all over the place. I have very clear who my people are, what benefits I'm going to bring to, what kind of income do I expect to come in, what kind of outlays am I going to have to do, who are my joint venture partners that are going to make this thing happen and bring it about, what kind of things do I have to stay away from to distract me, to get me off track, that will um, decommission me and stop me. All of that comes into play and that's incredibly important to understand. So as I wrap this up, I want you to keep in mind that in your writing, in your publishing, it's always important to use common sense. It's always important to use common words to say, to express uncommon things and ideas. I'm going to tell you, your audience, your listener will always thank you. I'm Judith Bryles. Here's to you and your author and book platform. We'll be back with you next week on Author You, Your Guide to Publishing. a part of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles